So keep in mind a little bit of carbon attached there. Let's see. Man, I wish I wouldn't cut it like that. Okay. So keep in mind the heart would be sitting in my chest like this, right? Two thirds is to the uh, left of midline. That would be about the orientation of my heart. It does not sit perfectly straight up, right? It sits at an angle. So remember this terminology, the top of the heart is actually called what? The apex. Base. Sorry, the base, base right? It's the exact opposite of what you would think it would be. <laughs> the bottom of the heart is called the apex. apex. Okay, so this would be the base of the heart or the top of the heart. I know it makes no sense. The bottom would be the apex. Okay, um, so as I'm looking at my heart, what you see here, just to kind of orient, uh, help get you oriented, this is the right atria. That's it. That is the right atria. This is the left atria. Okay? This is the left ventricle. This is the right ventricle. So the atria look a lot different than what you probably imagine them actually looking like. The atrias are tiny. Remember, they're not these huge things of muscle. All they're doing is gravity is opening a valve and blood's just dumping from the atrias down to the ventricles. There's not a ton of pumping mechanism from the atria. Okay, there is, but they're not forcing like tons of pressure unless the patient's in some type of heart failure. So those are your atria. There's flaps at the top. The, the other heart actually kind of shows them a little bit better. These are pretty well uh, kind of attached to the ventricles. The left ventricles on this side, the right ventricles on this side. What do you immediately notice about the left and the right ventricle? Right ventricle, left ventricle. Size. The left ventricle is huge, right? It's two to three times the size of the right ventricle. Why? Pressure. Your pressure. What about pressure? Because it's, it's bigger body. because it's, it's, not, it's forcing that through the entire body. My left ventricle has to constantly pump at a higher pressure than what my blood pressure is, right? That's called afterload. So my left ventricle has to pump higher than what my blood pressure is. So it's essentially, I'm curling a 45 pound weight with my left arm and a 15 pound weight with my right arm. If I do that for 30 or 40 years, my left arm is gonna be a heck of a lot bigger than what my right arm is, right? That is why our left ventricle is so much bigger than what our right ventricle is, okay? So notice the color change between my left ventricle and my right ventricle, that color change there. What do you think that is? Septum. That's a septum. That's the interventricular septum up here. What actually separates the atria, which it's kind of difficult to see, is your interatrial septum. So if I have ST segment elevation, I have a chest pain patient, I put them on a 12 lead, I have ST segment elevation in V1 and V2, what type of MI is that? Septal wall MI. So that MI is occurring somewhere in that septal wall. Let me back up a step. When we do a 12 lead EKG, what are we looking at? The left ventricle. The left ventricle, and only the left ventricle, right? We're not looking at the whole heart. We're not, we can't see parts of the left atrium or the right atrium. We are only looking at the left ventricle with a 12 lead EKG, period. That is it, all right? So when you think of that and you understand that concept, which a lot of people don't, how we name STEMIs, it's all anatomical terms from that point, right? So if I have a septal wall MI, it is an MI of my septal wall. If I have ST segment elevation in V3 and V4, what is that? What type of MI is that? Anterior. anterior. So I have an anterior wall MI. So I have an MI or an infarction of my anterior wall of my left ventricle. If I have ST segment elevation in one and AVL, what is that? I didn't finish those leads for a reason. If I have ST segment elevation and one on AVL, what is that? One on AVL. One AVL. Lateral. lateral. It is so lateral. We have one AVL V five V six. Right. There's four leads that we put into that lateral bucket. I said one on AVL specifically because one on AVL looks at the high lateral wall. It looks at this top portion of my lateral wall, the side of my left ventricle. So one on AVL, picture a camera here, looking at the top of that lateral wall of the left ventricle, okay? V5, V6, also lateral leads, but they are a camera here, looking at the bottom of that lateral wall of my left ventricle, okay? So that's why it's very likely for us to see um, 
elevation in just V5 and V6, okay? Because the most distal portions of that lateral wall are becoming infarcted. We're probably not going to see just infarction in one and AVL unless we catch it super early on. Because if I have an occlusion here affecting my lateral wall, everything below it's going to be affected too, right? And that's that left circumflex that supplies my lateral wall. So if I have an occlusion in my left circumflex and I get elevation in one and AVL, I'm probably gonna have elevation in V5 and V6 because it's downstream, okay? My left anterior descending artery supplies my anterior wall and my septal wall. What if I have ST segment elevation in my inferior wall? My two, three, and AVF, where is that? What does inferior mean? Inferior means below or bottom, right? So now I have a camera at the bottom looking up at the bottom of my left ventricle. Now in 70 to 80% of patients, the inferior wall is supplied by the uh, posterior descending artery, which is, comes off of the right coronary artery. So if I get elevation, that's a terrible time for a phone call. Let's see if I'm talented enough. Yep, um, I can do one thing. So if I get SC segment elevation in 2, 3, and AVF, I have an inferior wall of mine, we know the very next thing that we need to do in the field is what? Move V4 from the left side under the nipple to the right side, rerun my 12 lead, right? Why am I doing that? I, now, when I move V4 over, and that becomes V4R, or right-sided V4, now I am looking at the right ventricle. But I had to move a lead to do that, okay? So now I am looking at the right ventricle. Now, if I have elevation in V4R, now I know I have a right ventricular infarction, and I have an inferior wall infarction, which tells me that occlusion isn't in the posterior descending artery, because then it would just be my inferior wall. It's in my right main coronary artery somewhere, which is decreasing blood flow from my marginal branch, or my marginal artery, which supplies the right ventricle, and my posterior descending artery, which supplies my inferior wall. That is why we do that, okay? Questions on any of that? So now look at the top of the heart. Get a little bit closer for everybody. So look at the top of the heart. You're gonna notice a few different holes. So what do you think, and again, I said this in the beginning, if you get to a part when we're doing things like this, it's like, I have no idea what that would be. Stick a scalpel in there, a needle in there, you can use your finger to see where it goes, and that's gonna help you determine, oh, that, that's what that vessel would be, right? I obviously cut a large bulk of all the vessels off. So you're gonna notice four or five holes on top of this heart, and that one's kinda cut all the way through. What do we think this first hole is here? So if I stick my finger in there, what am I in? Right atrium. The right atrium. What vessel would dump into the right atrium? Superior vena cava. My superior vena cava, my inferior vena cava, right? So deoxygenated blood comes back from the body, goes into my right atria, so that it can eventually go down to my right ventricle, okay? What about on this side? I have another hole. What, what am I in now? The left. Now I'm in the left atria. What goes in my left atria? Pulmonary veins. So this would have been connected to the lungs. That's where oxygenated blood goes into my left atria to eventually go down into my left ventricle. Okay? What do you think this is? That was actually, because they're kind of switched, right? Uh, that's... Just look uh, at. Left. I think this is your pulmonary artery. I think. I think that ends up being your. So look, look at the size of that touch. of that vessel. Just looking at the wall of that vessel, what do you think that is? Is that the uh, aorta? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> is that the aorta? It is the aorta. It's thicker because it's well, thicker. It's got a thicker wall, and if I stick my hand in it, it takes me down to that left ventricle. Okay. Okay. So I know you didn't do that. But just looking at it, look so at the difference. Right here, there's your pulmonary artery. Correct, that would be your yeah. pulmonary artery that feeds from your right ventricle down it here. It kind of crosses. Yep. So that's your pulmonary artery. So right ventricle to lungs, deoxygenated blood to the lungs. This is the aorta, and we can tell that by the thickness of the wall. Touch your fingers. And it goes down into the left ventricle. Okay? 
So why is the wall of the aorta so much thicker than that of the pulmonary arteries, the pulmonary veins, the superior vena cava or inferior vena cava? It's under a ton of pressure, right? A ton of pressure. We know our veins are much thinner than what our arteries are because our arteries are always under an incredible amount of pressure. Okay? So that would be the aorta. Is there any pieces of the aorta left where it fills and supplies the heart? For the coronary arteries? Uh, you probably have to find it on the section that I cut off, um, which is probably, so there's the aorta. The you were able to find them pretty well yesterday. Might have to dissect this down a little bit more around those vessels to see them. All right. So back to normal anatomy here. I'm going to cut this heart, although they already cut it. I wish it wasn't cut that way. I'm gonna cut right down the septum, right down the septal wall. So you see, I'm not gonna cut anymore. It's gonna be hard to see, but I don't wanna cut anymore and screw it up. I'll, I'll, I'll show it around to everybody. You see those white bands in there? Yeah, heart strings. See that? So those are your chordae tendinae or your heart strings, right? When you hear that phrase, you're tugging on my heart strings, that's what they mean. It's your chordae tendinae. So those chordae tendinae, the base of them, try to stick it out where everybody you can see it at the same time here. The chordae tendinae that goes down to the heart muscle, that is your papillary muscle. So if you recall, the innermost lining of uh, heart muscle is your endocardium. The middle layer of the heart muscle is your myocardium. The outside of the heart muscle is your epicardium or your pericardium. So your endocardium is the innermost lining of heart muscle. Then you have these protrusions coming off of the endocardium, which at the very base is the papillary muscles. And then those papillary muscles go into the chordae tendinae. And those chordae tendinae are connected to what? Valves. The valves. So those are what's responsible for open, opening and closing the valves, okay? So a lot of times, what valves specifically do we hear a lot about having problems? Mitral, mitral. mitral valve, why? We get prolapse of the pressure. A prolapse mitral valve because of the pressure, right? Pressure My down. left ventricle is always hammering away, right? It's, it has the most amount of pressure out of all the uh, all of the uh, quadrants of the heart. So eventually, those chordae tendinae of that mitral valve become worn out. They become re too relaxed. As my left ventricle pumps blood up to the aortic valve and back into the aorta, my mitral valve opens back up into the into that left atrium. So that's why we get mitral valve prolapse. Um, I'll let you all cut on that heart, which is why I'm only doing one. So look at that thickness of the left ventricle. Incredibly thick, because that muscle is always working much harder than what the thickness of my right ventricle would be. So there's the thickness of my right ventricle. Here's the thickness of my left ventricle. Not even close to one another. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let me see if I can point out one more thing. It's a really good shot of papillary muscle right there. See this right there? That is papillary muscle. So there's a papillary muscle that's coming off your endocardium. Papillary muscle, chordae tendinae. 